so we can uh, start the show. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah ladhi al-azim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina abil qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad. Alhamdulillah, we have tawfiq to continue our study of Jami'u Sa'adat by the late Mulla Muhammad Mahdi Naraqi. Our discussion today is about Takbiratul Ihram and then Dua of Istiftah. We already talked about Mustahab Takbirat before Niyya. So there are six Mustahab Takbirat. Then you make Niyya and then you say your Takbiratul Ihram. This is the Wajib one for Salat Wajib and with that we actually start now what should be our understanding when we say Allahu Akbar he says you must remember the meaning of Allahu Akbar إِذَا كَبَّرْتَ تَكْبِيرَةَ الْإِحْرَامِ تَذَكَّرْ أَنَّ مَعْنَاهَا Annahu ta'ala akbaru min an yusaf. Remember the meaning of Allahu Akbar is according to hadith, you know, we have this that God is greater than any description. Allahu Akbaru min an yusaf. All descriptions fall short. Apart from Mukhlasin, in Lubul Lubab, we said one of the characteristics of Mukhlasin, those who are purified, is that they can describe God without need for Tanzi. Subhan Rabbika Rabbil Izzata Amma Yasifun or Subhanallah Amma Yasifun Illa Ibad Allah al Mukhlasin. Any person who describes, we say, Subhanan. Subhan Rabbi Ka Rabbi Al-Azzat Amma Yasifun. But, Subhanallah Amma Yasifun Illa Ibad Allah Al-Mukhlasin. Mukhlasin, they don't need tasbih and tanzih when they describe God. So, Allahu Akbar min an Yusuf. God is greater than being described. Or, Akbar min kulli shay, he is greater than everything. The reason we say Allahu Akbar min an Yusuf, because to say greater than everything is a little bit, or more than a little bit, you know, not very adequate because who is there and what is there to be compared to him and then we say God is greater than them. You know, there is no comparison here. Therefore, it's preferable to say Allahu Akbar min an Yusuf than saying Allahu Akbar min kul shay. Or Akbar min an yudraka bil hawas. He is greater than being understood and perceived by senses, by eyes, by ears, by touching, etc. O yuqasa bin nas means Allahu Akbar min an yuqasa bin nas. He is greater than being compared or likened to people so it's a great statement Allahu Akbar he says you have to remember the meaning of Allahu Akbar from this you must then move to understanding utmost greatness and glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
you know, we know these things in Aqa'id, but every time that you say Allahu Akbar, especially in Salat, it's good to remind yourself, review it, absorb it, let it settle in your heart and mind. Wa istinad, wa istinad ma sabahu ilayh. Everything other than Allah is attributed to Him, is relying on Him, is coming from Him. Bil ijad, wal ikhtira' wal ikhraj min katm al adam. Allah is originating them, creating them, inventing them, bringing them from uh, the realm of Adam, which of course means they don't exist. So from non-existence bringing them to existence. وَيَنْبَغِي أَنْ تَكُونَ عَلَى يَقِينًا بِذَلِكَ You must have certainty about this issue, that he is greater than anything, he is greater than any description, greater than any comparison, and everything is dependent on him, but he doesn't depend on anything, and you must be certain. حَتَّى لَا يُكَذِّبَ لِسَانُكَ قَلْبَكَ or la you lesanaka kalbuk. Your tongue would not contradict and reject your heart, or your heart would not reject your tongue. It's not that you say Allahu Akbar verbally, but in your heart, for you other things are greater. Not only they are not equal, they are greater. It's very bad. فَإِنْ كَانَ فِي قَلْبِكَ شَيْءٌ هُوَ أَكْبَرْ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ In that, if in your heart there is something which is greater than Allah, فَاللَّهُ يَشْحَدُ إِنَّكَ كَاذِبُونَ If something for you is greater than Allah, even if what you say is correct, you say, Allah Akbar, this is correct, but you are a liar, and Allah bears witness that you are a liar. Like what? Like what we have about Munafiqun. إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشْهَدُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ They say we bear witness that you are messenger of Allah. Was this lie? No, this was correct. وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ Allah also knows that he is sent by him. But وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَكَاذِبُونَ But at the same time that they said what was true, Allah says they are liars. Because they didn't say what they believed. So this was not kezb in what was said, it was kezb in the speaker. Kezb qa'il. Not kezb maqul or kezb qawli. So if I say Allahu Akbar and there are other things which are greater for me in my heart, then Allah yashhadu annaka kadamun. Allah says, I bear witness that you are a liar. وَإِنْ كَانَ الْكَلَامُ الصَّدْقًا Even if what was said was true. Like Munafiqeen. They say Rasulullah is messenger of Allah and Allah says no. This is a false witness. وَإِنْ كَانَ هَوَاكَ أَغْلَبَ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى If your whims, your loss, your lower desires are more dominant over you than command of Allah. Allah says something, but you do what you like, what you prefer, you know, because of your whims and you know, lust. وَأَنْتَ أَتْوَعُ لَهُ مِنْكَ لِلَّهِ You are more obedient to your hawaya nafs, to the desires of your nafs, than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then his command. In this case, if you are more obedient to Allah, uh, to sorry, to your Hawaii nafs than Allah, فَقَدْ تَخَذْتَهُ إِلَاهَكَ Then you have taken your nafs and Hawaii nafs as your God. As Quran says, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَى Have you seen the one who has taken his own lower desires and his own appetites and his own lusts and dreams as his Lord? As Allah, Allah means someone that you worship. وَكَبَّرْتَهُ And you have done takbir of that one, because that is greater in your heart, that is great. 
فَيُوشَكُ أَنْ يَكُونَ قَوْلُكَ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرْ كَلَامًا بِالْلِسَانِ الْمُجَرَّدِ So it is just a verbal service, you are paying lip service. وَقَدْ تَخَلَّفَ الْقَلْبُ أَنْ مُسَاعَدَتِهِ And heart has refused to assist the tongue. The heart is not showing the same reality that the tongue is saying. وَمَا أَعْظَمَ الْخَطَرَ فِي ذَلِكَ How dangerous is this? لَوْلَا التَّوْبَةُ وَالْإِسْتَغْفَارُ Had it not been that we can do tawbah, we can ask forgiveness. وَحُسْنُ الظَّنِّ بِكَرَمِهِ And we have always good opinion about his generosity. Otherwise we were destroyed by lying. Starting our salat with a lie. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam is quoted as saying it is in Misbahu Sharia which is attributed to Imam Sadiq or maybe someone was inspired by him, taught by him. Uh, anyway, it's, it has certainly many things from the reliable sources. فَإِذَا كَبَّرْتَ According to what is attributed to Imam Sadiq when you say takbir فَاسْتَصْغِرْ مَا بَيْنَ السَّمَاوَاتِ الْعُلَى وَالثَّرَى دُونَ كِبْرِيَا Anything lower than kibriya of Allah, greatness of Allah, you should do istisqa, means consider them little. Anything between skies and, you know, very high, you know, realms. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى إِذَا تَلَعَ أَلَى قَلْبِ الْعَابْدِ وَهُوَ يُكَبِّرْ If Allah looks at our heart when we say takbir, and he would see that we are not really in our heart believing that he is greater, then he would say, يَا كَذَّابُ أَتَخْدَعُنِي O liar, do you want to deceive me? You say you, I'm greater, but even few pounds make you tell lie. Even I don't know, making people happy or you know, afraid of them. You know, for example, losing uh, them. You are afraid of losing them. You know, you say bad things, do bad things. You know, mistreat rights of people, etc. How can you say I am greater than you? وَإِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي لَأَحْرُمَنَّكَ حَلَاوَةَ ذِكْرِي The punishment for you is that you would be deprived of sweetness of remembrance of God, my remembrance. So you would not enjoy your salat. You would not have any positive feeling. وَالْمَسَرَّةَ بِمُنَاجَاتِ You would not be happy with whispering to me. So you are mahroom and you are mahjoob. Allah has put a hijab, a veil between you and himself. Otherwise, how can someone be in the presence of Allah without hijab and not enjoy? So... If we don't enjoy our salat, it's because we are mahroom, we are deprived, we are mahjoob, we are blocked. We are not in his presence because of our absence. He's present everywhere, but you should also be present. Sometimes I am not there and the visitor has come. You are absent, not the visitor. Allah is present, you have to be present. فَاعْتَبِرْ أَنْتَ قَلْبَكَ حِينَ salatik. When you are saying your salat, examine your heart, yourself. You are the best person available to judge. If we had an Arif whose uh, eyes are open, he could tell us, but now yourself, you are the best available person 
Other people may not be able to have access to your heart. You examine your heart. فَإِن كُنْتَ تَجِدُ حَلَاوَتَهَا وَفِي نَفْسِهَا نَفْسِكَ سُرُورَهَا وَبَحْجَتَهَا وَقَلْبُكَ مَسْرُورٌ بِمُنَاجَاتِهِ وَمُلْتَذٌ بِمُخَاطَبَاتِهِ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ تَعَالَى قَدْ صَدَّقَكَ فِي تَكْبِيرِ If you see that there is a sweetness, you are finding some sweetness, some joy, some happiness, your heart is happy with whispering to Allah. You are getting pleasure from talking to Him. If you see these kinds of experiences in your heart, so be aware that Allah has affirmed your takbir. So when you said Allahu Akbar, Allah says, yes, my servant in his heart also believes that I am greater. So he gives you this joy, this sweetness. But in sulibta lazzat al munajat. But if you are not given the pleasure of whispering, this is taken away from you. Wa hurimta halawat al ibadah. The sweetness of ibadah. Hurimta halawat al ibadah. You are deprived of sweetness of ibadah. Fa'lam. أنه تعالى كذبك في تكبير الله has rejected you in your تكبير وطردك عن بابه and has pushed you away from his door وأبعدك عن جنابه has sent you away from himself if that is the case if you don't see any joy any sweetness فبك على نفسك بكاء الثكل like mothers who have lost their children cry over your tragedy why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invited me but now he is rejecting me why right at the beginning he has not let me even enter salat وَبَادِرْ إِلَى الْعَلَاجِ قَبْلَ أَن تُدْرِكَكَ الْحَثْرَةُ الْعُظْمَى before greatest of loss, which is the loss which happens Yawm al Hasra on the Day of Judgment, before that happens, try to find a solution. With Tawbah, with Istighfar, with preparedness. So, this is our condition at the time of Takbiratul Ihram. So you see, this Allahu Akbar, there are so many things to think about it that then you don't have time to think about other issues. <laughs> For everything, there are lots of things to discuss uh, in yourself or think about them, consider them in yourself, so that your mind remains engaged in Salat. Then, as you know, it is recommended after Takbiratul Ihram, we make this Dua for we call dua ul istiftah. This is dua for the beginning of salat. Wajjahtu wajhiya lilladhi fatara samawati wal ad. We are indeed inspired by, by what you know Prophet Ibrahim ala nabina wa alihi wa alihi salam used to say. When you say wajjahtu wajhiya lilladhi fatara samawati wal ad. I am turning my face towards the one who has created the skies and the earth. This face, although you are facing with your physical face to Qibla, but this is not enough. means the face of your heart, the face of your soul. مَعْلُومٌ أَنَّ الْمُرَادَ بِالْوَجْهِ هُنَا وَجْهُ الْقَالْبِ دُونَ الْوَجْهِ الظَّاهِرِ Vajhul Qalb, the face of your heart, not this face which is apparent. Although this should face Qibla, but with this you cannot face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe someone is facing Qibla and is thinking about something else. 
لأن الله سبحانه منزه عن الأمكنة والجهاد حتى توجه إليه الوجه الظهر الله has no place and direction so that with physical face you turn towards him what you are claiming and تتدعي في هذا الكلام what you are claiming when you say وجهت وجه للذي فطر السماوات والأرض أن قلبك متوجه إلى فاطر السماوات that your heart is turning towards the creator of the skies and the earth so this is your claim be very careful that your first claim after entering Salat with Allahu Akbar you enter Salat now this is the first thing you are claiming وجهت وجه للذي فطر السماوات be careful that this should not be a lie إياك أن تكون أول أن يكون أول متفاتحتك للمناجاة بالكذب والاختراع. Be careful that the first initiation of talking to Allah and whispering to Him starts with lying. نعوذ بالله. As لو كان قلبك متوجها إلى أماني when your heart is thinking about its desires وهمه في البيت والسوق. It's thinking about what is happening now in home, what is happening now in the market, in my shop, in my business, in my office, you know, think about other things. Or it is fi awdiyatil wasawis, your heart is somewhere in the valleys of temptations. Okana ghafilan, or it is heedless. Lam yakun muqbilan ala Allah mutawajjahan ilayh, is not turning towards Allah, is not paying attention to Allah. وَكُنْتَ كَاذِبًا فِي أَوَّلِ مُخَاطَبَتِكَ مَعَ رَبِّكَ In the beginning of addressing Allah, if you are a liar, you have to be very careful. فَاجْتَهِدْ أَنْ يَنْصَرِفَ قَلْبُكَ عَمَّا سِوَى So try that make hard, you know, efforts work hard so that your heart can turn away from anything and come towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has iqbal in this time. وَإِنْ أَجَسْتَ أَنْهُ Even if you cannot keep this condition, and right now try to have it. This is a very important part. This is a critical part. This is the beginning, the first attempt. If right now you say to Allah properly, maybe Allah helps you for the rest of Salat. So try not to miss this part, the beginning. It's very important. لَأَلَّا تَكُونَ كَاذِبًا فِي أَوَّلِ كَلَامِكَ So that you are not a liar in the beginning of your speech. Okay, after وَجَّحْتُ وَجْيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا حَنِيف is someone who was turning from falsehood towards truth. حَنِيف means going from باطل to حق. حَنِيف is such a person. Opposite to جَنِيف who goes towards Batil. So when you say Hanif and Musliman, Fa'akhtar Bibalik, let this occur to you that Muslim is not a person who does bad things to others. You say you are Muslim, you are Hanif and Muslim. Who is Muslim? One of the conditions of Islam is al muslimu man saluma al muslimun min yadihi wal lisana. People should be safe from our hand, our tongue. You see how much connection with Allah and connection with people is very important. As I said, you know, in uh, several places, especially in that retreat, you know, in Canada, we said that in Islam connection with Allah and having proper relation with people are very much connected with each other and if you go closer to Allah you will become more kind more merciful to people so now that you are saying Hanif and Musliman you must remember that Al Muslim Salum Al Muslimun Min Yadihi Wal people should feel safe from your hand and your tongue. 
فَإِلَّمْ تَكُنْ مَوْسُوفًا بِهَادَ الْوَاسْفِ كُنْتَ كَاذِبًا If you are a person that people are not safe from his tongue, from his hand, you annoy friends or relatives or neighbors or strangers, any person, then كُنْتَ كَاذِبًا So you are not uh, Muslim. And then you say, وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Be careful, shirk is not always explicit. We have shirk khafi, hidden shirk. If anything other than Allah becomes part of our niyyah, this is shirk khafi. فَأَخْتَرْ بِبَالِكَ أَشْشِرْكَ الْخَفِي وَكَوْنَهُ دَاخِلًا فِي الشِّرْكِ That is also shirk. إِنْ يُؤْمَنُ أَكْسَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَإِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ Most of them, they don't have faith unless they are mushrik. What type of shirk is this? It's shirk khafi. When we do riya, when we show off, when we do things for the sake of people, for the sake of dunya, for the sake of you know, I don't know, reputation or position, etc., لإطلاق الشرك على القليل والكثير الشرك doesn't need to be a lot you know you don't need to have you know idol to worship or you have you know few gods to worship maybe you don't have any idol but what is in your heart what is your intention what gives you reason for action فلو قصدت بجزء من عبادتك غير الله من مدح الناس وطلب المنزلة في قلوب. If for even one part of your salat, for few seconds or one second of salat, you think of doing your salat for someone other than Allah or doing something for sake of something else. For example, you want to be praised by people. I am, for example, uh, saying prayer, other people are watching me, or it's Salatul Jama'at. Anyway, there are people who think about me. And then I say my zik or my to my ruku or sujood in the way that they praise me. I told you uh, this uh, story that once a person went to the mosque and saw some place, someone was praying, I was alone doing Ibadah and he was very uh, much uh, you know taking his time to Ruku, going Ruku, taking time, Suju taking time, you know, very nicely reciting. So this man said, Masha Allah, what a Salat this person has, you know, and he heard this and while he was praying said, I am fasting too. <laughs> So he was so impressed that this man praised him, said that you cannot praise me more because I'm fasting also. So sometimes it happens. It doesn't mean that this person has to be really a starting Salat for this because he was al alone. He was saying Salat alone. But then when someone comes, then Riyah happens. وَطَلَبِ الْمَنْزِلَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ and you want to have a position in the heart of people. So even if for part of Salat you have such things, kunta mushrik. So mushrik is not just idol worshipper. You become mushrik. Kaadiban fi hat al kalam. You say wama ana min al mushrikin. You become a liar. Fanfe an hat al fanfe hat al shirk an nafi. Nafi means negation. Reject, remove this shirk from your nafs. Vastashir al khajla fi qalbi. I'm feeling embarrassed. How can you think of other people in the salat? Be an vasafta nafsaka be vasfen laisat muttasafatan behi fil waqa. You are describing yourself with something that your nafs doesn't have. You are saying, I am not mushrik, but your nafs is mushrik. And then you say, إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين. When you say your 
mahya and mamat is for the sake of Allah this big claim so fa'lam anna hadha halu abdin mafqudan li nafsih mawjudan li sayyidi it's a beautiful expression he says someone who can say this uh, who is for himself mafqud he has forgotten himself he exists for his master for his beloved you know to say i am praying for the sake of allah is not easy i am fasting for him, but it still is possible but to say my life and death are for the sake of allah it's not easy so this is for someone who has forgotten his ego has become very pure fa'nan an dhatihi baqin bi rabbihi he has reached the position of fana self annihilation and is now enduring with god it means mean, meaning he has life in god it means he is continuing but without ego la yara li dhatihi min haythu hiya qudra wa quwwah he says i as myself have no power I cannot do anything. Anything I can do is from my Lord. بَلْ يَعْلَمُ حَيَاتَهُ وَبَقَاهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ He believes, he knows that his life, his continuity, his duration is from Allah. وَلَا تَكُونُ حَرَكَاتُهُ وَسَكَنَاتُهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ His motions or lack of motion is only for the sake of Allah. فَالْقَائِلُ بِهَوْذَا الْكَلَامِ إِذَا رَأَوْ لِنَفْسِهِ مِنْ حَيْثُ هِيَ قُدْرَةً وَأَثَرًا أَوْ صَدَرْ عَنْهُ فِعْلٌ مِنَ الرِّضَى أو الْقَذَبْ أو الْقِيَامْ أو الْقُعُودْ أو الْرَغْبَ فِي الْحَيَاتِ أو الْرَحْبَ مِنَ الْمَوْتِ لَأُمُورِ الدُّنْيَا كَانَ كَاذِبًا So someone who says my life and death are for Allah then he should not see for himself any power. If you see power in yourself, if you do things for the sake of your own pleasure, for the sake of your own uh, benefit, then you are not a truthful person. So, right at the beginning of Salat, when we say Allahu Akbar, we should remember the meaning of Allahu Akbar. We should know that it means Allah is greater than any description or Allah is greater than anything or greater than any comparison, greater than people. Think about this issue and try to say it while you mean it. At least you honestly try to come to this conclusion, to this kind of understanding. And then if you want to say it, as a mustahab, which is very good to say this dua of istiftah, fatiha means beginning. At the beginning of salat, wajjahtu wajjiya lilladhi fatara samawati wal ard hanifan musliman wa ma'ana min al mushrikeen inna salati wa nusuki wa ahiyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. You can see it also in Rasala. Uh, then, this is inspired by what we have in the Quran from Ibrahim and Nabi Nawali wa salam. So there are elements that you have to think. What is the meaning of wajah to wajhiya? What is the meaning of hanif? Moving towards truth. Muslim, offering peace to others, not harming them, not hurting them. Ma'ana min al mushrikeen, no sign of shirk should be there. All my rituals, my salat, my rituals, my life, my death belong to Allah. We have to think about these things. So you see, we have lots of opportunities to keep ourselves engaged with salat and not let our mind run away with these things, these ideas. You can keep your mind and attention present during salat. Inshallah, in the next session, we will talk about Ista'adha. Before starting Surah Al-Hamd, it is mustahab to say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. What should we think when we say 
A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Inshallah we will discuss in the next session Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Allah Muhammad Thank you Shaykh Allah Fatkum Shaykh Do we have questions? With questions yes we have some questions Yeah also, I say, Salamun Alaikum wa Rahmatullah to all who said Salam on Facebook and Zoom. May Allah bless you, inshallah. So, um, there's a quick. I'm going to uh, try to read the questions that are most relevant. So the dua after takbir, and of course, if anybody would like to ask directly, please go ahead and unmute and just you can go ahead. Uh, the dua after takbir, should it be in Arabic or in any language or the thought of it? It's very difficult to memorize, uh, memorize Arabic sentences for me. Yeah, you can think about the meaning, although marajah may allow dua in Persian or Arabic or English whatever your language is but you have to check your marja but more simple is that think of the meaning you don't need to say it if you don't know how to say it just think of the meaning Salaamu Alaikum Alaikum Thank you very much once again I've been deprived of um, I was concerned about you. No, I thought um, uh, you know we. I used the um, the form, so just to give everyone equal opportunity. I see. I see. Um, and the brother can go through the questions one by one. But now he that he said you can directly ask them following the protocols. Um, thank you very much once again. You're welcome. Um, just um, a question I had. I mean, and it's kind of the theme is relevant to other places as well. You know, this last section of Takibrat al Ihram, we said that Fa'lam Annahu Ta'ala Kazabaka fi Takbirak. And then, you know, Wa Taradaka an Babe, Wa Abadaka an Janabe. You know, at the end of the day, this person has come, this mm -hmm. person is praying, this person is standing. Mm. Even his heart is not fully with Allah for whatever reason. Mm. He's uh, attached to the dunya or whatever. He doesn't have this ledza of manajat. But now he's coming to pray. So why is this, you know, this kind of not harsh but a bit of a distancing element to it, rather than, you know, being okay. You've come. Even if you don't have the ledza, I will give it to you because you've come. Or you know, I will help you, or at least not wa'abadaka, wa'taradaka, for example. You know, what, uh, can you just shed some, some light on this, please? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, it's like a, a medical, for example, doctor, that when you say to a doctor, for example, I am eating this type of food, uh, Doctor can tell you with honesty that this food is harmful. You say, I'm doing this practice, that this is harmful. As a doctor has to be honest with you and say your problems. Here, Mullah Mahdi Naragi is a spiritual doctor. And he says, these are areas that you have difficulty and you have to correct yourself. As a doctor, he cannot promise Allah's mercy that, you know, even if you have these problems, it's going to be all right, you know, because he has to tell us what are the areas that we have to improve. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very kind. And if he knows that I am honest and I am trying to improve, he would help me. Maybe I don't get the sweetness of about the right away but he would pay attention to me he would listen to me he would help me uh, the main thing is honesty and humbleness but if you think that you know this is salat and this is okay 
this problem. So Mullah Mahdi Naraqi is talking to such people that they think their Salat is okay. And maybe even they are very proud of their Salat because, you know, I say my Salat, you know, on time or this and that. Yes, Alhamdulillah, you're doing on time, but don't be proud of that because you have these problems. And with honesty, we have to tell you. This is that the doctor is telling us that these are the things that you have to correct. So we don't want people feel despaired or hopeless and think their salat is useless. No, we just want to say that there are areas that we can improve especially if you don't enjoy your salat so these are things that can help you to find out what is wrong why you don't enjoy your salat sorry sir thank you so much just, just, follow, just on the same same topic yes because you mentioned that you know sheikh is being you know like a doctor so he's reporting he's not yeah. speaking on behalf of allah yeah but even when we go to that hadith you know for example that hadith that says you know there's some people who when they come allah you know doesn't give it to them doesn't you know fulfill their needs yeah and then he said because i love to hear their voice mm. but some people come to allah and allah quickly gives it to them yes they say because i don't want to hear their voice so this person is begging allah and Allah, according to that hadith, I don't know whether it's authentic or not, you know, it says that quickly give it because I don't want to hear their voice. Yes. I, I mean, how, how does now that is kind of in line with what um, Mullah Narabi is saying as well here. But this is now from a maksum, which is yeah. kind of more maybe reliable and attributed to Allah. They are also a spiritual doctors, you know, even Prophet was Tabibun Dawarun Bitabbi. So um, they g tell us what are the problems but of course we should not read these hadiths as one factor only so it's not that this hadith you mentioned is in al kafi but this is not the only thing that happens that because allah doesn't want some people says you know give them to says to angels give them give him quickly and someone that allah loves his voice Allah says, you know, delay because I want. This is uh, not the only factor, but one factor it is. And also why Allah wants some people to continue, why he loves more, because he knows that this is better for them. Some people you have to give them quickly so that they come back. Otherwise, they don't you know, continue. Some people, you know that they are more patient and they can continue and get more. So there are lots of factors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considers. And sometimes in our hadith, based on what was the discussion, one or two aspects are mentioned, sometimes three aspects. But uh, normally these hadiths are not excluding other factors. Even though hadiths which have number, for example, so there are five things that signs of, for example, Iman. It doesn't mean that it is not six or seven. Uh, this is why we need to have a scholar who brings all these ahadiths and ayahs and reflections and put them together and comes up with a system. Thank you very much. Ahsantum, jazakumullah khairan. And here we have uh, a few uh, comments and uh, some questions. Yes. One comment was uh, with respect to understanding that fear is often our own lack of understanding and knowledge of this that then affects our level of certainty uh, as you say that you must have certainty of one's heart uh, that this that one's heart should align with the tongue this was a comment uh, in the in the form also uh, some some questions were about if the videos were missed where to find them so if you go on youtube and you type this Secrets of Salah Shumali, you'll find them uh, in the channel of the Sheikh, they're all uploaded there. Um, there are some questions that are um, asking if you can help from the lens of uh, personal experience. What is it like if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an open door invitation during Salah? I think when uh, you feel 
uh, either as Mullah Mahdi Naraghi said sweetness of Salat or at least for you your Salat is a serious issue and you take it as a serious matter then inshallah this means that the door is open but if it is just some physical action some routine something that you know you just want to get rid of it you know relax you know and say okay alhamdulillah i did my salat i don't need you know then uh, to worry not in the case that you have performed your wajib in the case that you know it was bothering me now i'm uh, free these things are not good but if we can enjoy or at least feel seriousness of salat and you know talking to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then inshallah the door is open thank you you're welcome and here the last uh, uh, yes uh, so i'm getting a comment here about uh, the understanding takbir again on the phone i'm sorry i don't understand the uh, the question very well again you can go ahead and ask it directly um, I tried to read what, what I saw there um, so please go ahead and ask directly if you like or put it on the chat or, or reformulate it yes. Assalamu alaikum Sheikh how are you? Alaikum as thank you very much uh, good uh, my question was on uh, the takbir maybe I didn't phrase it very well so you know you said um, you know you should have certainty of this Mm -hmm. and that your heart should not reject what you say verbally and that the two should align. Yes. Um, now, the, the thing is often uh, the, uh, the le this certainty is affected because our lack of understanding of takbir mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, what this actually is. Mm -hmm philosophically and 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 all sorts w w can you make a comment on this because yeah. obviously you said that you should have this certainty and you should align with your tongue verbally but that alignment is affected because of our our lack of understanding of takbir and mm. of you know so yes. yeah yeah actually this is very good uh, example to say why aqaid is so important so we need aqaid all the time in every moment of our life we need aqaid this is one example if someone has proper understanding of tawheed tawheed zati tawheed sifati tawheed af'ali then for him allah akbar becomes very certain very clear uh, therefore, aqaid helps a lot. Aqaid doesn't guarantee that you know we become good people or good servants, but helps a lot. But if we don't have proper aqaid, we don't may, we may not understand you know what's really the difference between Allah and us. How great He is, you know, how uh, free from need He is. What is you know wajibul wujud, etc. We we don't understand anything. Therefore, in Salat also, we would not have certainty that is needed or clarity which is needed. So Tawheed is that part of Aqaid that we need to really spend time and grasp it. And even not once, after some time again review it, read new books or read it again the previous books that you have studied, all the time we have to refresh ourselves with aqaid it's very important thank you we got a question thank you very much thank you jazakum khair for clarifying sorry for not being able to understand